some some code up here. Maybe we can switch that. Um, do you know much uh, Python, Fonte? You had a little investing club in, in uh, prison. I had two, actually. Cool. All right. Yeah, I don't know why the CEO left. It's a good question. I'm just going to grab the balance sheet real quick and then we'll go to some programming. Looks like two billion in, three billion in revenue. The company's worth 52 billion. Unbelievable. unbelievable who was at magma before which somebody mentioned I think it was e4 who mentioned magma design automation some financials well they're growing like a weed they had two billion in revenue just a couple years ago so now they have three won't be long before they have four if they don't already and i think the profitability is quite good look at the stock though it's gone in just six years it's been a 7x Woo! holy moly Custom IC design. All right, here come the financials. Cash. Cash money. Cash money. Okay. Debts. Okay. I want you done. All right. So what we were doing a minute ago, or a couple, couple, uh, couple of episodes ago, maybe is the best way to put it, is we were making an actual Bitcoin our own Bitcoin library for fun in Python. And we're going to continue to work on that. Wow, it's amazing. Uh, Cadence is bigger than, slightly bigger than Atlassian and a little bit bigger than Autodesk, really big company, really successful. Part of the reason is look at the profits, um, around a billion in profits, a little under a billion in profits, so probably around a billion in cash flow. Yeah, as I predicted. So call it 50 times, 45 times earnings, which is about fair given the, given the massive growth. Really cool. Cool story, cool company. We'll look more at them later. All right. So what are we doing here? We'll call it numpy practice. And we're um, practicing numpy with, uh, well, I thought there were some files here. Yeah, there we, there's one. We wrote 20, very small amount of code here, just 20. 20 lines roughly. Um, and we're having some fun doing some uh, doing some analysis and comparing our um, 
code to uh, to a, a different library called base58. And so we're able to take a private key, a public key. We made the base58 array, which was funny because we couldn't get the right answer, and it was actually capitals before lowercases in ASCII, so we, we messed that up and quickly found the, the result. We defined this function to convert uh, base58 to decimal. We made a converter, a uh, pretty cool little uh, for loop here where we just sum all the base58 values. And um, yeah, so we just, we actually, it's pretty neat here. We just get the index position to give us the answer for uh, base58. So really simple, really, really simple. Um, now we're gonna get a little bit harder. Um, and hopefully I have my friend Fonte's help. Um, let's see if he's still here. <laughs> um, so we're actually going to start to take a um, we're going to take a we're actually going to review how do you go using ECC how do you sort of develop a, a Bitcoin uh, private key and so I think we could do that with the decimal. I'm trying to turn my mic up. Let's see. Can you guys hear me better now? Yes, no, yes, no, maybe so. Yes, no, hello. Um, much better? Great. Good to hear. Glad to hear. All right. Cool, cool, cool. So what we're going to try to do, it's not going to be easy. And again, I would love to have my friend Fanta's help, although we didn't need his help last time. Um, is we're gonna to try to figure out how to make our own little Bitcoin. Um, hey Nicholas, I, I didn't get to an answer for BSX. We're gonna make our own little Bitcoin um, library. Too no, too loud now. You guys are killing me. Um, any good now? A little better? No, maybe so. Perhaps. Okay. So anyway, um, we're gonna try to make a Bitcoin. Um, you know, base fifty eight is base. You know, is what we we're using here for. Um, in essence, we're, we're trying to translate these private and public keys into decimal numbers. But where do we go from there? Why is this useful? Why is this going to be interesting? Well. I'm going to find the Bitcoin ECC. Let's find out here. Bitcoin ECC protocol or something like that. It might give us an answer. And I, I recall from my prison web browsing that there's a Bitcoin wiki. And again, I'm still waiting to see if proof of life from Fanta. It'd be helpful to have his help here. Aha, here it is. So this is an elliptic curve called SEC P256K1. Wiki.org. This will be a fun project. All right. So let's see here. Okay, so this is just a sec P. 256k1, we can implement that, I think, fairly easily. I think the bigger question, is this the same project? No, looks like, like slightly different projects. All right, so what we need to figure out is how do we use ECC, and then we're gonna use a SHA-256 as well. But 
the important thing is that we start with ECC, not with SHA-256. And I think that's a big misunderstanding when it comes to um, Bitcoin. So let's see if there's a... How does Bitcoin work? That is the question. <laughs> let's see. Is it good? Okay. Nearly every 256-bit number is a valid ECDSA private key. Any 256 number from 0x1 to 0xFFFFF is a valid private key. The range of valid private keys is governed by sec P256K1. some of the same points here. Keep getting a bunch of messages. Let's see here. chat group here but I'll try to well, if we can hear me okay we, we good we good we don't want to do two things at once do we then we'll end up doing no things at once all right so it looks like this will get us some of the way there and this is pretty cool because there are not many places where you can go from private key to public key um, without, you know, just using a bunch of libraries and not understanding what the heck is happening. So this looks like it actually will go from point A to point B. Thank you. 
jumping on on the train as well, and then Beth getting <laughs> getting wiped for twelve hours. So it was an interesting chain of events. Interesting chain of events to say the least. Yeah, and then also kind of realizing that like there are some people in the group chat that are just like, uh, <laughs> and like yeah, and it's like it's like wait a second, like I don't want to be responsible for like these you know some of those people. Yeah, right? like I was um it's interesting in a in a in a different chat I was talking to I was talking to both Corn and uh, and Novus about this, and um, yeah, like obviously Novus Novus mentioned that. What's up, Orion? Sheep here. Warranted. Uh, but at the same time, it's like, you know, it, it, yeah, it, it, it's tough. It's tough for everyone when something is is so new like that. Uh, to really, well, and, yeah, and I mean, I think that's sort of like my thing, right? Is that like when we started the group chat, I was very, very, you know, all about who got yeah. added. Um, and then, uh, for various reasons, I was no longer the admin of the group chat. So. I think Shores, uh, Shores, uh, quantum computing is, uh, is a bit different from what you're asking, but I think Okay, so anyway, um, public keys and signatures are just points on an elliptic curve. Okay, if both of these points are created from the same private key, there will be a geometric connection between them that proves that the person who created the signature also created or owns the public key too. So we have some specific parameters for sec... P two fifty six K one. So here's of course the famous elliptic curve. So a is zero here. So this is y squared equals x cubed plus seven in essence, right? Yeah, I just uh, threw some shampoo in there. I did. Uh, I did get a second monitor, and he's right. Albanians never go bald. <laughs> When's the last time you seen a bald Albanian? So this is a prime field. Number of points on the curve we can hit 
or the order. And the generator point. Prime modulus is just a number that keeps all the numbers within a specific range when performing mathematical calculations. It's a prime number. This is a really cool site if anybody wants to check it out. I read a lot about this stuff in prison. There are a few mathematical operations you can form of on points on the elliptic curve. The main two operations are double and add, and these can be uh, combined to form uh, perform multiply. These operations are the building blocks of EC and ECC, and they're used for generating public keys and signatures in ECDSA. Modular inverse, double, add, multiply. All right. For being able to perform double and add operations on the point curve, we need to we first need to be able to find the modular inverse of a number in a finite field. Bear with me. You see, there's no actual straightforward division operation in ECC because all the mathematics take place in a finite field of numbers, right? In a finite field, there is no division. You can multiply by the inverse to achieve the same result. Makes sense. You see, this is sort of like a base 58, or modulus, I'm sorry, modulus 47. 29 and 13 are multiplicative inverses. You can go backwards to the number you started by, by again multiplying by the inverse of the number. This always works when you have a prime number of elements in the field, like 47. The prime number cannot be divided by any other number, so we'll distribute the results from modular multiplication back across each of the numbers in the field evenly without repeating and missing some numbers. So by using the prime number as the modulus, you can guarantee the number in the finite field will have a multiplicative inverse or a quote-unquote division operation. Obviously, this is a confusing first step into elliptic curve math. But think of finding the inverse as a basic tool of modular arithmetic. Not all programming languages have a built-in modular inverse function, though, which is why you have to implement one yourself. So this is Ruby, and I don't know Ruby. Um, but this shouldn't be too hard to figure out. 
Uh, we could look for modular inverse in Python, though. Twelve years ago, this question was asked. So it looks like we have a simple answer here that uh, Forward. This is Python three seven. And we just need some numbers to test it out. Let's see here. Okay. So what we'll try to do is we'll try to do Take multi line comments. This one Python has multi line comment. Anyway, let's try this. Triple quotes, that's what I thought. see if we can get multiplicative inverse so let's pick a prime number like 17 um, and X and Y are our um, numbers we're trying to inverse here so let's see Y equals 12 and let's just say uh, X equals 5 so let's see Y equals how X 1 p 
Let's see, what do we do here? Print F. Just print. Uh, we have a terminal on here, right? We can just run this. Why is invalid? Uh, so let's see, let's print this. Uh, it's sort of silly. We can't uh, just print algebra. All right, so this will return seven, which I guess is the multiplicative inverse. So let's see, x to the y mod, is there a modulus for pi, Python? Python modulus, modulo, just, okay, so let's see, print, um, let's see, what are we doing here? Seven, star, uh, Five modulo p. Is that right? Let's see. That'll always equal one. Great. Okay, that sounds right. Tell me why is seven? I don't play CSGO. I feel really stupid right now. Let's try this. sense, right? 15 times 12 is 60. 60 mod 17 is 9. Why is 60 mod 17 9? Uh, let's see. Well, 17 times 3. Is 51, so you need 9 more to get to 60. 5 times 12 is 60, right? So, mod 9. Okay. So now let's find a situation where x times y is mod 1. So, let's see. Times seven 
is 35 mod 17, right? It's 1 because 17 times 2 is 14. All right, so 5 times 7. Okay, so now power of 5 to negative 1, 17. Seven. Okay, so that is the modular multiplicative inverse. Okay. Why is the inverse of x p, which is five mod seventeen? Okay, so we have a formula here that will work. K to negative 1 is what we'll call the modular inverse of K. Fascinating. So we need to define, uh, well, we could do a couple things here. We can actually make this a, um, we'll call this MMI. And MMI will take two variables, and it'll return how x negative 1 p, right? So that's the MMI of x and p. And then we're going to also define a new function called double. That's probably a reserved word, so we'll just call it double point to be safe. Okay, so now point has two properties, x and y, I'm guessing. So maybe we'll just make that explicit. Instead of point like being some kind of object, we could just say x and y. There's no, this is JavaScript syntax, so we got to get out of curly braces. Thank you for mentioning that. Very nice. All right. Thanks, Jordan. Big shout out to Jordan. All right, so slope. Oh, so maybe it is going to return x and y, because we have to return this object. So what do we do? Do we make that an array? Do we want to make that a list? How do we want to do that? List? Python list. We could do it as a list. Python can return multiple values, but do I want to return them as a list, or can I just do x, x, y? All right, we'll try that. Slope is 3 times x to the second plus a. What is a? A is, is a the, the elliptic curve a? Because then it would be 0, so we could just do that x squared is a minus 2y minus 2 star. This is gen y. Or is this point y? This is going to be point y. All right. And this is all modulus p, which we'll call, we'll make this p. Translating a little Ruby here, um, and 
because we don't have a division, we're going to have to use inverse. And then there's nothing that you can really be done Defining x from gen x, I think, here. Is that going to work? And now can we try double point by five? Will that work? Okay, we've got two very big numbers. That looks like an elliptic curve point to me. Our goal here is that we can make a key, a private key and a public key. I'm not even sure we need the digital signature. Um, is just the generator point multiplied by your private key. Huh. I guess we probably didn't need a bunch of that stuff we were doing earlier.
d times g equals q. Um, well, you would think the pub public key would be if d times g equals q, this gives you a point. We still have to convert Q, that point, into a key, right? Here's the public key, which is a point on the curve. convert each coordinate to hexadecimal. Okay, so we get, and then what, we just stitch them together? Looks like it. All right, you see that? That's X and that's Y. Hmm. So the question is, how do we multiply these points. I don't think it's straight multiplication. Here's the private key. The generator point is gen x and gen y. Here's gen x, here's gen y. Okay, so here's the multiplication. Double and add, that's why we're creating these. Add. So we have double. Let's try the add function. if statement here. I'm not an expert in Python if statements, so let me take a look at some other places in my code. No, I'm just gonna need an example. I think it's just if this should actually this might even work the same way in languages in this language. If x equals y return double x y no double of x. When I say I'm not an expert, I don't even I don't know how to do it. <laughs> That's what I'm really saying. Okay. So this is a simple slope. Point one, point two. Oh, I see. We're sending in two uh, 
Ah, we're sending in two uh, values here. That sucks. Uh, okay, so this is point one of y and point two of y. So this is point one minus two divided by x minus a. There we go. Modulus p. Okay. This is a new x, maybe. Return x, we'll call it equal slope to the second power minus uh, a minus b. Modulus p. something else. Okay, seems to be an error going on here. So we got slope, which is some crazy number as it should be, squared minus a minus b. Do I have this right? Point 0.1x and point 0.2x, right? Okay. That's, oh, I see what I'm doing here. Point 0.1x is x, point 0.2x is a. This is x minus a. Okay, that might work better. Okay, still no. Extra parentheses. Is maybe, let's see.
So, hmm. I think I have to implement this differently. Slope equals point y minus point y inverse. Let's try this inverse. MMI of x minus a p. What am I doing here? Multiplied by MMI. Okay, let's try that. Sweet, we got it. Okay, now that we can add and double, we can multiply. Once we're done with multiplying, we can do the whole Bitcoin thing. So let's see. Point is G, um, K, and then I guess we're going to what, do Gen X, Gen Y? Create a copy of the starting point. I mm, don't think we need to do that. Convert integer to binary. Okay. So we have to do a binary, <laughs> this is a little confusing, a little frustrating in fact. Um, that, you know, I, I, I have one of these, like, one of my kind of core beliefs is um, that, 
like well, that's the pretty easy. Metaverse, the internet, like just is, is not real, or, 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 or if that's too strong a point, it's certainly secondary to, you know, base reality. And so I don't treat it with like the same, um, I don't treat it seriously in a way. Like, I treat y'all seriously because it's like a phone call, you know what I mean? But, you know, it's like, um, yeah, pe- people like are real, real scared of uh, information today, you know what I mean? In a, in a way that is kind of baffling to me. And maybe it's just because I've been on the internet a long time and I've seen a lot of things, but I don't know. It's, it, it's, it's interesting to see how people are perceiving the Dolly stuff, the GPT stuff, you know. Um, particularly, I'm unfamiliar with like, how this stuff works, but, you know, people that aren't, you know, are like, oh my God, like, AGI is so close, but like, you know, let's differentiate between, you know, if there's an AI that, like, you know, just posts on the internet, you know, it's like, it's not as bad as, like, I robot. You know what I mean? So people are really afraid of this stuff for no reason. And it's just big dog sets. Big dog sets. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, it, it, yeah, it, it definitely, I, um, I, I don't think people are necessarily conditioned to, uh, take a step back. I mean, it's, a, it's you know, a, I mean, we see it, we see it in politics all the time, right? I mean, it's out, it's outrage by outrage, just say. And, um, <clears throat> you know, this, this can, this is in regards to pretty much anything. I mean, especially, especially seeing as we, we, as humans now, um, you know, we essentially have information on demand in real time, all the time, right? I mean, the transfer of information is just so quick. And uh, I think uh, I think the lay person doesn't necessarily have, they, 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 they don't feel like they even have time to take a step back and, and, and actually think, right? I mean, I mean, think before they speak, essentially. So, um, yeah, uh, yeah, it's just you know, my two cents on that. But, uh, yeah, I, I agree wholeheartedly. Yeah, like yesterday, you know, Indian Bronson had a race baiting space. Called, <laughs> you know, uh, does anime cause interracial relationships? Right? <laughs> I think that was really funny because it's kind of an endemic of like the oh, oh I'm, I actually am concerned how much the metaverse is impacting real behavior, and it, maybe that's there's there's something true to that, you know, but but also it's like it's a bit it's a bit paranoid, you know, or, or yeah, rather, it's, it's such a small subset of humans like, yeah like, yeah. It's, yeah it's like that's what happens when you're online you know too much yeah. or you, you just you give you you give this stuff too much weight you know like for myself you know um you know i started to rough rough road trip a lot during the pandemic you know and just like hang with the boys outside you know cashed out in 2020 and, that's right fanta you know, get my new businesses online but like yeah it's, it's all about IRL, you know what I mean? Like, uh, metaverse is a prison of our own creation, uh, in, 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 a, in a way. Um, so yeah, it's an interesting shift, you know, this year. Um, just looks right to me, you know, as they say, vibe shift, multiple vibe shifts, you know, but it's just because, say, and you know, everyone's traveling right now, everyone's like, everyone's getting their flights canceled. They think that America, like, the world's collapsing because, like, you know, everyone's flying around right now. Also, that, you know. There's been some weirdness since the airports, like not enough people. Um, oh, not yeah, bad that I had airplanes, but it's really funny. Like, uh, I see. No, yeah, exactly. no, because you're exactly. you're not distributing yeah. the subtraction. You're subtracting I x minus a. Really bad, yeah. Also, all my PCs, like all PC friends, undergo complete psychological breakdown. Like uh, <laughs> Mark, 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 you know, I was calling him up. I was like, Yo, you, you good, man? You know, I, you know, you know, it's all. Oh. You know, I see what you're saying. You're trying to get money, fucking Sam Trackman of FTX, but you know, <laughs> yeah, I can. I think. Yeah, like two weeks later, like, yeah, man, I'm doing some soul searching here. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so, yeah, so, I think this is still. Yeah, I'm just trying to avoid the like, order of operations and, uh, changing. Yeah, so I suppose like, it doesn't make a difference. Step back and think about exactly what's going on. So it's all, it's all reaction.
option there. Yeah, now, now one concern I think that I, I do weigh, like, just to keep it on the EX stuff, you know, just um, one, one, one deep seller that I foresee is the whole time on chip situation, you know. I saw that, you know, Apple might not even drop the iPhone 14 this year due to, you know, um, open questions about where the whole China Taiwan US situation is going. Um, and then that also goes for, you know, I believe NVIDIA sources, you know, TSMC. I heard their, their new GPUs are coming out. But, you know, I'm just thinking in terms of the GPU supply chain, you know. Um, we need to make sure that is healthy so that, you know, uh, as many ideas can be actually made manifest and expressed through, um, through engineering work. I think it's both, I, I think there are all like headwinds and tailwinds, right? Like the crypto market is like kind of crashed now. So it's like, and also Ethereum is moving to like a, a like a proof of work to proof of stake. So that makes like getting GPU at least like way easier. So I'm optimistic on that. And I do think that there are like a lot of fabs are coming online. So we are seeing like the South Korean 500 billion, in, like investing 500 billion. We'll see in like the next 10 years, America's fabs will come online. On like the bigger nodes, you'll see like India's as well as like other European fabs come online. So I, I'm actually more like optimistic about the long term because like countries now see yeah. this like a major security risk as in like, you know, you, we don't want just like all, all of us dependent on Taiwan. So, so I think- Yeah, yeah, I think it might be like, there might be just the next five years we're just in, the, in that next 10 years, I think, you know, even with crypto not doing, you know, GPU supply, you know, there, there, there's, chance, there's events that, could, that, that, that have a non-zero chance of happening to sort of, you know, derail that. But we'll, we'll deal with that when we deal with that. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a scalper, so, you know, when those GPUs go out of stock, you know, it's me and my friends buying them all up, selling to y'all, so, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe I know a couple, a couple people that do that as well. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's interesting. I mean, I mean, I think if, um, yeah, I, I tend to be with Vegeta there as well. Um, I actually think uh, the, the smartest thing that China could prob probably do is actually wait this out and, you know, wait until these fabs come online, uh, until they do anything with Taiwan. Um, yeah, they need, they need the money too. Like, China's like, they, they're really front right now. Like, they, uh, no, they're, they're fucked. I mean, they, they, are, they are so over levered and they have um, serious credit issues. And I mean, we've been seeing this play out over the past, past year or so. I mean, even even longer. I mean, you, you know, it, it, with the collapse of Evergrande, right? I mean, and it's, it's, it's actually interesting that the collapse of Evergrande, you know, I mean, you probably heard about it for like a week and then it was like, okay. Right. Well, that could work. Right. Like, and then it's out of the news and it's like, Okay, like, like next next thing, um, but and, you know there is like serious contagion, and, and and it was proven that that was uh that was a serious contagion risk. Evergrande was not the only the only uh, you know, you know, under, and you know when you have uh, when you have a lot of their economy built off of the property sector, um, to have your property sector go under is not exactly a very good thing, <laughs> and. Uh, like it's, it's happening right now like and so i mean they're, they're they're in some serious shit i mean yeah they're they're in no way like, economically prepared to to go to war with the u.s um i, I, I think if they're clever they'll just they'll just wait this out wait for the european fabs to come online wait for the wait for the korean fab wait for the u.s fabs to come online um yeah a lot less collateral damage that way yeah, it seems that, like, um, the most offensive thing that they've been doing over really the last few decades is the espionage program. Okay, so I'm going to turn that off just because I uh, have a lot going on. Um, this is somewhat complicated, so let's, uh, let's try this. We made the modular inverse function. That's not too hard. The hardest part here is this multiply point, and I'm going to need Fonte's help here. So this uh, multiply point takes in this uh, K number, uh, which is the Koblitz, um, 
let's see what, what k is real quick. Should be the Koblitz curve, but it might just be what we're multiplying by, right? Is that just the coefficient? It could be, hold on, let's see. So we're gonna multiply the point. This is the elliptic point, gen x, gen y. This is the sec, sec p, 256, one. Just try to figure out what exactly it is we're doing here. The generator point is being multiplied by some number k where you change k to binary. I think that we're comfortable with. Um, then we're gonna do some magic. K is what we're multiplying by, right? right k is just what we're multiplying by so if we get zero we double and if we get one we double and add so what we need to do is we get this binary point okay so you can see this is uh, 123,123 if you add up well this is one this is what uh, two no yeah this is two so this is three, so that makes sense. Should be about right. <laughs> okay, so now we want to split this number into an array of however many digits this is. And we this is how you do it in Ruby. So, so we need a way to split the binary digit into kind of an array of binary strings. So list binary point. Okay, we could try that. Oh, perfect. All right, so now we can um, take that list and do a for loop. Okay. Um, let's see, so we could do like four index y and enumerate binary point. Would that work? Let's say print y. Let's see if that works. Um, right. Okay, that worked. So it's just a for loop. Um, and now we need to sort of do some running mathematics. Ignore the first binary character. So we double. Or then double and add. I see. So we double for each one. Okay, I got it. All right, so let's see. We have a running. So now here's my second question. I guess we have to get a list, or what Python calls a list. I have numpy here, or numpy. So I want to save the x point and the y point in some variable. Uh, let's see here. And I want to pass the, that, the, that point, the x and y point, to um, double, which takes double point, which takes an x and y and returns an x and y. So. Let's see. 
double point gen x, gen y, but what returns from double point is current gen x, current gen y, I don't think you could do it this way, equals double point. Would that work? Does that work? That'd be amazing. What a weird syntax, right? Variable 1 and variable 2 is the result of the function of variable 1 and variable 2. Would that work? Wow. So, yeah, we can do it like this. We could just have it keep running, right? Then we could do an if here. If, uh, what is it, y equals one, we can also add. like elliptic curves to me. Now let's see if our private key, public key thing works, if these will actually return correctly, because we have um, private keys and public keys that we can get from like a key generator website, but now we want to make those generations ourselves. 39, uh, what? what are you saying, Fanta? Why you do this to me? No, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. So we have to um, actually assign this like this, right? I see. Is that what you're saying? Oh, that's why it's not changing it. Now I get it. Now I see. Now I should probably print those again. I have it right. Let me look at add point real quick. Oh, add point does it correctly. Doesn't look like it's adding anything. It's always the same output.
if y equals 1, console.log, what am I doing here? One. What's the problem? Oh, there we go. What an insidious bug that we have squashed. Okay, we now can create a public key from a private key. Let's try it. Imagine this code works. Can you imagine? No way, right? No freaking way. So let's see, how do we print? Print, multiply point. Is this right? Yeah, will this work? It's, uh, it's not gonna just, is it gonna print uh, the return? Let's see. All right, well, it's not right. This is not the result that we expect here. But we can debug. Um, there's a mistake somewhere. Forgot to ignore the first bit. Hmm, probably, probably. <sighs> okay, so we got binary point, which we've taken the binary of k. Uh, so let's see, where do we index y enumerate in k? So let's see if y, um, hmm. Oh, maybe we just uh, change the um, binary point equals binary point. What do we do like this? Oh, cut one off. Is that it? Do I get that syntax right? I'm going to try it anyway. I'm going to do it live. All right, didn't work. Is it the other way? Like this? do a live. We did a live, it didn't work the second time either. <laughs> oh, did we? Oh, we are cutting off one off already with two. Okay. things we could do is take Ruby. Is this thing interactive at all? No. I could do a Ru quick Ruby. Try this. Say Ruby uh, live REPL. Ruby REPL. Okay. Try that. What do you guys think?
sure how to reference like the Ruby variables like this maybe. I don't know. Try it. Okay, undefined method x. g.x, g.y, maybe it's like this kind of thing. I can omit g? That doesn't seem right. But I take a word for it. Yeah, it has to be some star g this is the x point. Oh, can I, I could just, maybe I could just put in the number x. Is that what you're saying? Put in the number y manually. We don't need to know Ruby now, do we? Wrong over arguments. Word. We look at multiply. Oh, it's already. I see. It is the wrong number of arguments. Now I know what you're saying. All along. We get some trashy photos. Yes, we do. It's very beautiful. I think we have, um, okay, well, it's multiplying it, but we need to print it, right? I don't know how to print in Ruby. I'm hoping this works. Sign up for the full experience. What? Sign up these nuts. Okay, there's the, uh, there's the result. Was that what we were looking for? Yes, okay, so this code works as per um, okay, this code works. So, what we want to do is sort of trace, trace what happens. All right, so let's see here. We can print each step, right? And we'll see where we're going wrong. That should work. Okay, let's see, print binary the state. Okay, we can print, and, and we can print as it's coming along here. Print current. We could even print current before, current after, and current after this. Let's see how that goes. It's a lot of numbers. Jeez. All right. But the first step. first steps to their first steps. This looks like too many first steps. Hmm. Can't even find where I called this thing, or ran it, I should say. Run it back. Is it here? Is it there? Is it anywhere? It's too much. It doesn't even go back that far. Okay. It's not good. Um... First print. Okay. 
is seven six six five. Okay, let's see here. Maybe I can run it. <laughs> you know, let me run it in here. Alright, so it's wrong off the bat, it's, uh, which is probably what I would have expected. So it's um, putting out the wrong numbers. And so there's something wrong with our um, first line of code, really. So we multiply k times gen x, gen y, which are global constants. We assign gen x and gen y to these two. Let's get rid of this. We take the binary point. Hey guys, sorry about that. Um, Fonte, you like Tool? I didn't know that. What else do you like? Anybody figure out the problem as well? Misreading point 0.1 for point 0.2, is that what's going on? Bug in line 26, ah, thank you. This is, you want y minus b, star m i, x minus a, p, so that is what it says. Oh, okay, hold on. Two parentheses. That's the same thing. You want the whole thing modded. Durr! Durr! All right. Still not the right answer, I don't think. Oh, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hmm. It's not changing the answer, which is worrisome. Hmm. Which means, are we even calling this? Does look like it's getting called correctly. Um, doesn't modulus take last precedent anyway? I don't know. Let's try um, again that first calculation is wrong. So we're just going to take step by step. Let's see what happened. here. All right, so let's see, we got the So what's the first print here? We're printing K, which is what we're passing in. Great. Then we get the binary point, which is this. And then Hmm. You know what, I'd like to see what it looks like before the slice and after the slice. So let me try this. Binary point no slice equals bin of k. Uh, let me try that. Binary point no slice. Okay. All right, so here's the binary point. 
Do you see that? Do you see the problem? We're not ignoring. So what would you do without the Shkreli debugger? We got a slice. Do you see that? We got to slice two or three off. We're going to slice the leading zero and then the B and then the one. Crazy, right? Right? Yeah, I'm, I, one of the things I am good at is debugging. <laughs> All right, we still are getting the wrong number, though. I think we're getting closer. Uh, let's see. Let's go to our website. debugging skill from when I was a child. Um, what's the answer? 338, right? Okay, so this should be 3 and this should be 952. All right, let's uh, print the instruction set again, or the iterator, iterative points. <laughs> it is what, yeah, you called it right. All right, let's go to the first calculation. We don't really need all these other ones. All right, so we got some weird result here. We know this one's correct. All right, so it should have the seven, six, six, five, and then that's Y. Oh, is this running off the screen? I think this is running off the screen. I don't think this is the exact thing. Hmm. Think it should be two? Are you sure? Because I don't think it slices off the. I thought you're supposed to slice off. You're supposed to actually slice off one of these things. Because with two, I think we're just slicing off zero B. I don't know. I think. It's certainly not the right answer. Because uh, I think we got bugs somewhere else. Go to bed, go to bed. I think we're supposed to ignore the first binary character. That doesn't mean the zero B. Yeah, all right. Anyway, all right, so let's see if we can't. Um, See what the first, the very first.326 and then the next print is as follows so let me just take this and put it in like a notepad plus plus or something if I only had a some place I can just dump some data Okay. 
So here's a binary number. This is with the five ones. It leads with five ones, so all right, here's the generator. Oops. The generator is okay, and that looks right because it's it's multiplying it, right? So the number's getting bigger. Although it seems to get smaller or something. Um So where is that print? Okay, we're printing binary, and we're splitting, and then maybe we can actually do this for a stack trace. Keep saving. Oh man, OnlyFans is draining my bank account. I gotta stop. Can't. Thought Patrol Surveillance Division. We spend millions on only fans patrolling. Alright, here are the five ones. Then can we do we are we printing the car? Hey, we are printing the car. Here there's one. Let's see how many let me see how many loops through. Thought Patrol is a group that I started many years ago. Just don't ask questions about Thought Patrol. Yeah, OnlyFans is going ham. It's that time of the month, maybe, I guess. I signed up. So I thought I was printing the car. Maybe I copied and pasted. Yeah, I think I copied and pasted from the wrong place. different. Um, oh no, it's printing the car. That's why. The first car is character is one. Just the same car. Next character is two. So let me see if it goes through four of these or five of these because it's five. Um, there's four. It'll be interesting to see if the next one is five or zero. It's zero. Okay, so we're doing that part right. Why are we getting the same numbers? We're getting a slightly different number. Let's see, let's copy what we're getting. Let's see how different it is. It might give us a debug answer. It's not too far, so I think we're missing the double, possibly. Uh, we're, we're missing the ad. We have the double, but we don't have the ad. And let's see how we're doing on Y. Um, here's Y. These are, of course, the original generator numbers. For all you hacksaws out there. us this is the right number Ooh.
All right, let's see. So where are we going wrong here? Oops. Let's see. So we want to look at uh, you know what we can do? Um, uh, how, do how about this? How about Conditionally print based on the index. All right, so those are the 254 font I mentioned earlier. When index is one, we're getting this result. So what we can do is we can sort of pause there and just just print when the index is one. All right. Uh, when index is zero, maybe we should do it when index is zero because when index is zero, we're just starting the calculation, right? If index equals zero, do this, okay? And then also here, if index equals zero, do this, okay? And we could say, after doubling, okay? And then, yeah, let's try that. All right, so, after doubling, we have this. I also want to see what y is, because y is 1 in this case, right? Oh, I think I see what's going on here. We're not testing if y... Ah, oh, no. I think we're all right. Let's see here. Let me try this. X is zero and Y is one. Y is one. And I want to know the type of Y. Uh, I did forget a comma. Thank you very much, compiler. Class is string. Good. Short font to all paste my code. Of course. What are we doing here? Let's see. Just paste this. Uh, what do we call it? Uh, paste bin. That's what all the hack source use, I believe. So anyway, let's go, let's fucking go. After doubling, we get this. And this is, I believe, the final numbers. Let's go to Ruby. So for Ruby, um, okay, split each do, print current. After this, so data here for the REPL, the REPLit. I should really get a Ruby. I think I have a Ruby interpreter. I got an online one. Interactive Ruby shell. Ruby. Install Ruby, maybe? Ooh, maybe you found the bug, Cena. 29, 29. The 
return return x? Uh, that's a good question. Um, that is a good question. That is a good question. Do you want to try it? It's crazy, but it might work. I don't think it is. Imagine that works. Doesn't look like it worked. But that could be, that definitely could be the error. But I want to try it um, more um, sort of carefully. I want to download this. Maybe closer than an answer. But we're not quite there yet. Let me take a look here. doubling I don't know I actually think I actually think I'm right because we're much closer <laughs> much closer to the right answer let me see here something's wrong much closer to the right answer, but that doesn't mean anything necessarily. Yeah, you see, this is the first result. Line two? Let's go back to figuring this out. Um, all right, so we got index is zero, y is one. So we're gonna double after doubling, and now I need I need a good Ruby um, REPL. That's the problem. So. I could use the Windows um, but I can I can probably just do this. Um, way as well. I 
one of the I just don't know what index I'm in. Maybe this maybe will it tell us here? Index. I don't think so. Let's try it. Okay, so let me see in Ruby Ruby print index. Is it? I'm trying to get the index value. I like an index number. I think I could do that. Um, each. I see each with index. Let me try that. Hopefully this doesn't mess up all the code. All right, we don't need a Ruby interpreter. <sighs> All right, five zeros here. Is that right? Five zeros? Print binary. Okay, now we're going to do I want to print it again? Or did we already did this where we determined it came up with four. We did. Okay. So get rid of this. We've got the index thing now, so we're good there. So let's see if index equals zero. I don't even I don't even know what the Ruby if syntax is. Let's take a look at that. Okay. And then you have to do an end. That's right. Okay, if conditional then something, let's see, print or is it puts? Print works too, right? Okay, print. Okay, so this should run only once. So now we can kind of trace.
you notice how it only goes through 220 index in indices and we went through 254? That immediately makes me wonder. Uh, wonder if our answer is in here somewhere. I don't see it. And it's not going through the right... Uh, the right math anyway, so kill that idea. All right, let's go to VS Code. Okay, let's see. Let's go back to here. See there, stack trace, debug. All right, so these this is the gen x gen y. After double link, very important. Right, we had this from before, and so the question is, how do we get here? So we're gonna carefully step through. Well, it looks like a, two different numbers, doesn't it? Now, this is seen as number. This is the correct number. But wait a second. It looks like a mix of both. It looks like Cena's number is correct, but it's wrong for the Y number. Son of a gun. This was the original correct number, but that doesn't seem right to me. <sighs> Confusion abounds. Because this was what we called the correct number. But I think this is the correct first step, which is to double. Right? So it ends up becoming this number. Hold on. Let's take a look at how this transforms slowly. Right? After doubling and adding, ah, now we're at the correct number. I see. So Cena's math was correct. Congratulations for finding that super bug. Very smart person. But we're not getting the right Y number. And in fact, um, the Y number looks like it's unchanged after the first step, isn't it? Oh, hey. Gen X in two places, is that what you're saying? This is the new double point function. Let's take a look. Double point, double point. X, Y. I don't know, I think the original double point was beautiful. Okay, correct, yes, that's that's exactly what I have, Fonte. That's exactly what I have. New X, new Y. Are these like immutable? Uh, can we just write over them? Oh, we need the old references. Too sloppy, too sloppy. <laughs> I'm getting content. <laughs> Always throwing shade. Alright, if this comes out right, I'm gonna always remind ourselves, remind myself. 
to go a little more slowly and triple check that the code's right. And there it is, it is correct. Let's just triple check that we got that all right. And then we can celebrate. Celebrate good times. Come on. Meow meow. All right, let's see. I'm pretty sure I remember the number is about right. I just need to find the damn window. Open it and close it. There it is. Yeah, there we go. 338, right? Darn it. 338 and 952. 338 and 952. Wow. We did it. We did it. We did it. Yeah, I have Bloomberg Y. All right, so we did it. Um, we don't actually want to sign anything. Um, what we're really worried about is this. And what's amazing is we just convert to hexadecimal, so I think we could do that in Python with just hex, right? Python hex function, right? Just hex. I think it was Cena too. Uh, I think Cena. I don't know if Cena's here or not, but Cena really. Nomad too. All right, so we've got something that will get this private key and return a point on that public key's elliptic curve, right? So now, what we're going to do, and that's just multiply point. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take that public key and we're going to transform it to hex. So let's say, let's see, all right. Let's define um, private key. Uh, let's see, private key and decimal perhaps, okay? We're gonna take that, put that here. We're gonna do private key and decimal, okay? We have gen x, gen y. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say public key, pub key x, pub key y equals this. Okay, now we need to hex pub key x. And then we need to hex pub key y. We, of course, have to sign this somewhere. So we're going to sign it to hex pub key x and hex. Just gonna print all of this stuff. Pub key x, pub hex, pub key x, pub key y, hex, pub key y. All right. Uh, let's get rid of all this debugging stuff. So we need to get rid of the 0x leading. So we're going to try to put like a slice. How do we do this? <laughs> I'm screwing this up. 
Is it splice? I have it right up here. Oh, we just, uh, oh, I see how to do it now. So let's see, this is, we can try. Okay, that's perfect. And now we just have to concatenate those two. Will this work? Looks. Let's see. Yep, yeah, looks like it does. Just kill it here. x is gone so now we need to concatenate these things so let's see combine key equals should this work called key x plus text of key y let's try this combined key yep that is the combined key cool so that is the private bitcoin key right do we see where it concatenates Missing the beat here. F A eighty five. Okay. Do you guys see it concatenating correctly? B one. Okay, there, and then there's the rest. Cool. Perfect. Looks perfect to me. All right. So that is how we go from a private key to the public key in hex. So we'll call this public key hex, made more descriptive. All right, so what good is that public key, key hex? Can we convert it back to decimal? Is that, does that work? There's a des. Line with bin uh, Python decimal. Yeah, no, we'll have to do the checksums and stuff like that. Add each hexadecimal coordinate to 32 bits by prepending zeros if necessary. 32 bytes. Oh man, it's almost midnight. I have a call at 8 o'clock. So this is X, this is the Y. There are points on a curve. Um, this is the hex point of the curve. This is the hex point of the curve. This is the concatenated, basically, hex point on the curve. But we can go backwards, right? If somebody gives us let's see if we can if we can figure this out. 
had each hexadecimal coordinate to 32 bytes, 64 characters. So is this 64 characters? Should we count? Can we count? Yep, sec p two fifty six one. Yes, indeed, sir. That is it. So what do we say list? Is it list? Lang, of course, Lang. It is 64. Will it always be 64? Okay, so let's see, common prefixes, or public key prefixes. Every X coordinate will have one of two possible Y coordinates. One is even and the other is odd. Does that make sense to anybody? One is even, the other is odd. It just seemed like they're different signs. Wouldn't it? Still got a milli sitting in my mask. I got the whole fucking verse written out, dog. Everybody knows Nick Vaughn. That's my dog in them. Oh, he just sent me the instrument. Oh my, ready to spit. You guys are going to lose it when you hear this rhyme. What's going on? Yeah, September. Oh, yeah. Uh, do you want to fly out for September? Um, I'm going to have a part, like a, a release party if you want to come in. Fly in just to fucking stunt on everybody. And we could even do a fucking debut. Oh my god, we could do a live from the VIP section of the club. Like a walkthrough. <laughs> That's going to be pretty lit. <laughs> oh. Yeah, they're probably going to take me back to jail that night for balling too hard with Nick Vaughn. It is what it is. You got to do what you got to do. Take the charges for me, dog. <laughs> the lads are on tour. Shut the club down. Uh, all right, let's focus. Let's focus on this elliptic curve shit. Why would one be even and odd? Oh, I think this, they're saying it's even and odd in the basis of 